Hey everyone, I'm back, and today we're going to be talking about Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. And this movie is directed by Zack Snyder, and it came out in 2024. And just like the first movie, I thought this movie was awful. I didn't really like anything about it. The only things that I kind of liked were some of the effects uh, looked uh, kind of cool at points, and the movie was funny bad at points, unlike the first movie. <laughs> which made it a bit entertaining, but most of the movie was pretty boring, especially because of how the movie is structured. And for a movie called Part 2, you're expecting like like a big story to come out of this movie that was split into two parts, like Part 1, Part 2. Like, what are you expecting? Something big, something grand. And the music is implying that something big and epic is going to happen or is happening. And it doesn't really achieve that, mostly because of how the movie's structured, like I said, but I didn't really get into it. And the first half is just setting up for this big battle filled with characters I don't care about. And the second half is the battle. And that's the whole movie is that. This is almost an unspoilable movie. Like if you've seen the first movie, that's most of the story <laughs> like in terms of like setting things up and uh, like having a story that's conclusive like that's pretty much the first movie the rest of this is kind of just an epilogue almost and the first half of this movie is just uh, like i said already characters preparing for battle and pretty much nothing happening really and characters talking and we literally have a scene where Every, I guess, main character is just sitting at a table and they're all speaking to one another about why they're here and what brought them to this place. And they sit down at this table and talk about all their past experiences for like 15 minutes. And it's like, why are we doing this? This feels so unnecessary. Like, why is this happening? And also, it just feels very oddly structured. Like, it just felt like it came out of nowhere also. Like, this is something we have to do in order to get you to care about a certain characters if and no, maybe when they die, whether or not characters are going to die. And now we have some characterization to these characters, and uh, yeah, that's it. Not saying that uh, characters uh, shouldn't be developed. I'm just saying that... Uh, what we get from the characters is nothing interesting. It's just they all had tragic backstories and nothing else. <laughs> that's literally all that's going on. It's just tragic backstory. Next person, tragic backstory. And it's just the same thing for everyone there. I thought the dialogue in this movie was pretty bad. No one talks like a real person. And every single line of dialogue it just feels like... What is being said is very important and epic or big or important. And I just did not buy it whatsoever. The action in the movie was not the worst thing in the world. If the slow motion wasn't there, I think I would have enjoyed it a bit better. And this movie uses quite a bit of slow motion because it's a Zack Snyder movie and you're probably expecting that. But it kept using slow motion in moments where it felt completely unnecessary and very ill-timed. Like, when you use slow motion, then you're showing something epic that you would want to see, but they just completely screwed that up in this movie. It's just moments of, like, the most awkward thing ever. Like, I don't understand why it needed to be slow motion in certain moments. And just like the first movie, I don't like uh, the lens that uh, this movie is using like everything in the background is all blurry and I can't really see what it is and not to say that's the case for every single shot in this movie there's like a handful maybe <laughs> where that wasn't the case but there's still very few and the way the movie looks is just ugly and I couldn't stand it whatsoever and uh, thinking about uh, the first movie in retrospect as boring as that movie was at the very least uh, I can remember different locations that our main characters uh, went to. Like, it wasn't just on a ship. It wasn't just on, like, this one planet. It, we were going to different locations and, I think, different planets? I could be wrong about that. 
And there was like a nice variety of uh, things being shown where this maybe it's just two to three locations and that's it. There's only one thing this movie has going for it, and that is an hour-long action scene in the second half of the movie, and it's not even that great. It wasn't very exciting, not because it was poorly filmed, but I just didn't care about the characters, and because of that, the whole movie was boring, and I just had no reason to get invested in the story, and this movie did not need to be split into two parts. I'm sorry. That did not need to happen. And everything in this movie is just very predictable and generic, and you know exactly what's going to happen, and there's no surprises, really. And that's about all I have to say about Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. It was no better than the first movie. I don't know if it's better or worse. I'm not going to compare the two. I'm not going to rewatch either of these movies. <laughs> Because I don't feel compelled to revisit this story. This story has nothing for me. And I'm probably going to forget about uh, this entire series within the next couple of days. So, Unfortunately, I can't recommend uh, this movie. I just don't think it's very good. Skip Rebel Moon, both this one and uh, Part 1. You don't need to see either of them. And I just think they're really dull and boring. And with all that being said, I'm going to give Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver, a 2 out of 10. Thank you for watching my videos as always. If you enjoyed this review, be sure to leave a like and comment down below you thought of Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver, and my social media links. They will all be in the description, so follow me there. And last but not least, subscribe to be a part of Foley Nation, and I'll see you when I get my next review up, and that is going to be for The Equalizer. So look forward to that, but until I get that up, thank you for watching, and have a great day.